Okay, everyone, it's time to have a worship service now. So, let's sing the song, the, the, the feast we sing, uh, 2, 2, 3, 6, together as we'll sing. And the verse 1, 2, and 4. neighbors 
with our family uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And mustard seed, mustard seed offerings for two Sundays were $198. So this will benefit to food pantry and thanks for your mind to serve the church ministry as well as the mission to the world. There will be a community garden work on Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m. So I experienced, I experienced uh, my wife and I experienced the community garden ministry yesterday. So it was really good and awesome to, well, to see the nature that uh, God created. And then also experienced a good relationship, not only <laughs> with Sandy, and but also with all people who come to the food pantry and then who serve the food pantry, the family large and rock. And so I really encourage you to come to the church on Saturday night and 9 to 11 a.m. to well it's not a work I think is our relationship and then it is our kinship. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. So I really encourage you to come Unity Garden Ministry on Saturday. And uh, there is an SPLC meeting on Tuesday, July 13 at 6 p.m. at the church and also church council meeting will be at 6 p.m. on Monday, July 19 at the church. And this is the last announcement that, well, it's uh, I asked, I asked a colleague that uh, it's available to add these announcements in our worship service that and she agreed, she agreed with that. So there is a summer uh, musical theater performance in uh, July 16, 17, 18 uh, at the Foot Hill Performance Art Center. So maybe this uh, musical theater's title is Mary Poppins Jr. So, if you are available, just uh, come to come to the Put Hill Performance uh, Performing Art Center in Onianta on Friday, on Friday at seven thirty p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at uh, three p.m. So, well, just give her the courage and then keep uh, make her help her to keep her dreams and then, well, what what she wants to do. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> it's time for to worship. Hope in Christ. Hear the word of truth with the good news of our salvation. Believe in Christ. We are sealed with the mark of the Holy Spirit. Live in Christ. We embrace our inheritance as children of God. Live to the glory of the Christ. Our first hymn is United Master Hymner 518 O Thou in Whose Presence.
surpassing our sins and our whole our own lives in the past week. So give our compassion to, to God in this place. So let's pray for our compassion. Holy God, as we come into the presence of your divine holiness, we confess our many shortcomings. Our hands are not clean. Our actions do not glorify you. Our hearts are not pure. Our motivations do not glorify you. Our words are not true. Our deceitfulness do, does not glorify you. Our elegance is bleak, a fickle. Our idolatry does not glorify you. But your mercy, O oh God, give us hands that are clean, hearts that are pure, tongues that are true, and souls that worship you alone, that our whole lives may glorify you. Amen. 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 Now, King David was told, The Lord has blessed the household of Obadiah and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went to bring up the ark of God in the house of Obadiah to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sounds of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Rachel, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. 
After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women, and all the people went to their homes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he, pre he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we are also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who are the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal and promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll we'll be singing the song from United Message Hymnal of 529 called Fernal Foundation.
gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 14 to 16. King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said, he is Elijah, and still others claim he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, who might be headed, has been raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome to well, welcome to the worship service and ten forty five and then I bless all of you to receive the word of God uh, with the with with the wisdom God gave to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless all of you to be filled with God's grace and love through our worship service. I hope and pray that through the word of God proclaimed in today's service. The eyes and ears of our spirit will be opened so that God's love and hope are planted and grown in the field of our hearts. Following the grace of God that unite us into one church in Christ as we heard together last week. Today I would like to proclaim the word of God in terms of the hope given to us. We often speak of the term hope frequently not only in the church, but also in our daily life. We sometimes use the term hope with, uh, with different words. What words do we use instead of the hope in our daily life? Wish. Yeah, wish. And sometimes we, call, we will speak of desire, or expectation, or dreams. Therefore, I first look up the definition of hope on Google. The Google is a very good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so I searched the definition of hope on Google, and it is defined as a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain things to happen. According to this definition, hope can be seen as a form of our mind that we anticipate something invisible now. Now we cannot see that, but to be happened in our future. That is well, not clear, but sometimes in some sense, it looks like a hope. In the sense, hope must be an important factor that provides us with a positive energy in our life. The lives of those who live with hope and those who live without hope shows a big big difference. There are big gap between those two types of, pers two types of persons who live with hope and who live without hope. If searching YouTube, YouTube is another good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> if searching YouTube for the difference between the life with hope and the life without hope, we can see a lot of video clips which talk about that. People without hope simply focus on what is happening before their eyes and work hard to adapt their lives to the situation. So, if we live without hope, we just see the situation happens before our eyes, and then we just spend our all times to adapt our lives in that situation. But. People who live with hope focus on the potential, potential beyond what is happening before our eyes, and focus on changing ourselves in a given situation. Hope offers positive potential for us to drive the changes of the world, more than actively thinking about our own future and responding to the changes that happen to us. This is literally a huge, huge difference. Even the common hopes we have in, in the world radiate the positive energy that changes our lives. But 
What about the hope of God given to us? Are you looking forward to the hope, to the hope that God has promised us? Are you looking forward to Are you looking forward to the hope that God has promised to us? If so, let's talk about God's hope recorded in today's scripture. The epistle to Ephesians was written in written by the apostle Paul to Christians in Ephesus while he was in prison. It was a letter to remind them of the gospel of Jesus Christ once again. and to describe how they should live as Christians in their lives. At the time, Ephesus was the large port city of the Roman Empire and the cultural and religious center for the Roman Empire. Like a real port. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, the apostles Paul put his particular interest and focus on this city. When visiting Ephesus on his first missionary journey and established the believers in Christ at the city, he sent many spiritual leaders such as Priscilla, Aquila, Apollos, and Timothy to Ephesus to teach the word of God to people who lived in Ephesus. Also, the disciples, the Jesus disciples, the apostle, one of the Jesus disciples, John, the apostle John. continued his ministry to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in this city. Then, the apostle Paul wrote the letter to deliver the hope of gospel for, the, for believers who were facing and will face spiritual challenges even though he was in jail. His purpose is very clear. He wanted to affirm the hope that only God could give to believers who would find it difficult to maintain a Christian life because of worldly pleasure and false teachings. This is verse 3 to 6 of today's scripture from Ephesians. Praise be to the God and Father of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us to be adopted, adapt to be adopted, as His sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with His pleasure and will, to the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the one He loves. So. I spoke again. There is a part that I spoke again. So, He predestined us to be adapted as His Son through Jesus Christ. This is the hope that God has promised to us. What hope is the Apostle Paul talking about this scripture, this letter? It means that We have been adapted as children of God. This hope implies a complete change in our identity. In other words, we have been transferred from the status of sinner who had no choice but to die because of our sins to the status of children of God who know the secrets of God and praise God. If the end of our lives had been, had been decided by eternal death, could we have found hope in our lives? Think about it. Imagine, imagine your life. Even though you do many, many good deeds and behaviors and live very, very ethical lives in your lives. But the end, at the end, we will die. There's no life. Can you find the hope in your lives if we have only one option to die? But God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to the earth to take away our sin, giving us a hope that we will cherish forever. 
The apostles were proclaiming this hope to the Ephesians, encouraging them to establish their Christian identities correctly in the midst of the corrupt world. He guided the Ephesians to live according to the true and eternal hope of God, not the empty hopes of the world. The apostles Paul wanted them to receive the sealing of the Holy Spirit, which marked them as the people of God's kingdom. In the sense, I believe that this scripture, today's scripture from Ephesians today, is truly, truly for us. The world we live in is the world where we live right now is full of so many values and principles that cause confusion about what is true. Can you apply all these scriptures in your life, literally? Think about it. I think it's really hard to apply this scripture in your life because there are different backgrounds between uh, between the backgrounds when this scripture was written and the backgrounds where we live right now. So, it's really hard to apply the word of God in our lives. We have to interpret the word of God. So, especially there are many values and principles in our lives that uh, that is not mentioned in the scripture. So, can you make a decision that what is true and what is false, what is right and what is wrong? Is it possible to make a decision easy? No. Sometimes it seems healthier to have a flexible faith according to the principle and values of the word than to keep strictly our faith in Christ. So, many people and the world says to us that, Hey, what are you doing? Just have a class of faith. You, you are living, you are living in the 21st century. Why are you having that straight face? It's ridiculous. Have a class of faith. I also have wondered, what is the mercy of Christian faith before many phenomena in the world? So, my wife Jean and I sometimes argue that what is true and what is wrong? Because it's really hard to, well, make a decision to confirm and then to make a decision, well, what is truth and what is wrong? What is false? The scripture, but the scripture of Ephesians today reminds us of God's hope that we should not miss under any circumstances. Yeah, that's correct. Sometimes we have to think more flexible to live as a Christian in our situation, but we never forget this point. There is the hope that Jesus came to the earth to save us. This is true. And then we never miss this promise, this hope in any circumstance. It is a faith and hope that we have been adopted as children of God in Jesus Christ. This truth, this hope cannot change in any circumstance. That's our faith. That's what we believe in Jesus Christ. Above all, God's hope unites us in Christ as one church, one community, and one family. Recall what we heard last week about the grace of God that unites us as one in Christ. God's hope promises us the joy and blessings of unity through the way we are adopted as children of God in Christ. So, God already promised Abraham that I will make your descendants like well, the sand in the beach. 
and then the stars in the sky. How? Are you descendant of Abraham, the person who lived in Israel? Yeah? In face, but, well, originally, I, came, I come from South Korea, and then I have not visited Israel yet. <laughs> so, I wondered, am I, this, I, am I descendant of Abraham, the Israel person, Israelite? Hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> are you? Are you descendants of Abraham? Originally? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> you have a big faith. Well, God promised, God promised Abraham that I make your descendants like the sands of the beach and sand of the beach and the stars in the sky. Many, many. Sentence. And how God fulfilled His promise through Jesus Christ as adopting us, as by adopting us as children of God. So through Jesus Christ, and as you confess right now, through our faith in Jesus Christ, we become. Son, we become son of God and become daughter of God. We become children of God. This is the hope that God promised us. So, sometimes each of us, sometimes each of us, each of us may lose the hope in our own difficulties. But that is the another hope that God gives us. We come together. We are in community, one community. We are in one church. So, even though each of us may lose the hope due to our difficulty, but don't worry about it. There are many people who encourage each of you and then also help you to return your way to the Christ Christian way, Christian life with one hope, in one community, one church. That is the hope. So, can we have a greater hope than this? My sisters and brothers, so give thanks to God that we can gather together in one church with one hope through the Word of God. Again, give thanks to God that here are many friends and families who can share God's hope with each of you and proclaim God's hope together to the world. Give thanks to God for giving the hope for eternal life for us who just have had an ending of sin and death. Even though David had many problems and challenges, you saw, you saw in this Bible that David is not an imperfect person. David was an imperfect person. He had a lot of problems, also challenges in his life. But he could rejoice with singing and dancing before his people because he saw God's hope and he experienced, he received God's hope. As such, there are still many worries and challenges in our lives, but now, with God's hope, we are not controlled by the circumstance, but change ourselves through the power of God beyond our circumstance, and we will proclaim this hope to the world. Are you ready to proclaim the word of God and the God's hope, not only within this community, but also to the world? to share God's hope. I bless that God's hope is in the Miracle United Methodist Church and in the hearts of all of you. Amen. Amen.
Here again the good news, because of the riches of God's grace. Jesus, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses, all gifts of God's generous and amazing grace. Let us see the hope upon Christ and live for the praise of God's glory. And we are in prayer for Pastor Bach and Jin, Mike, Kate, and Eleanor Singler, Cor Corey Perot, the family of Mary Leo Grande, Linda Jubro, Stephanie Bomar, Bob and Glenda Moore, Ruth Martin, Jane Allen, Liz Sellers, Richard Himes, Andy Zimmer, Diane Andrews, Debbie Kaiser, the victims and the families of the Florida building collapse, Susan Spray, and Bill Triola. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we'll say the Our Father. Yeah. Okay. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. As a closing hymn, we sing the hymn, we sing the song from The Face We Sing 2020. Pray the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. <laughs>